morning and welcome to Are You Up Babes. This morning I wanted to speak about rejection. Rejection. We've all experienced rejection, right? Rejection is an action from an outside source or sources that affect you deeply on the inside. It's an action from the outside. It can be one person, it can be many people, and it affects you deeply on the inside. It causes you shame, sadness, and incredible grief. These wounds can now cause you to respond differently to people. You now believe you have to protect yourself. You are the one that has to protect yourself. You are your refuge. It's not God is my refuge. It's now you have to be your refuge. It's no longer God is my hiding place. You now are your hiding place. You need to hide yourself. You need to protect yourself. Have you ever seen a wounded dog? It's been hurt. And the first thing it does is it gets into a corner or into a place that it feels safe in and it begins to lick its wounds. It begins to lick and lick and lick the place or the area that is wounded. If anyone comes close to the dog to try and help it even, the dog will growl and snarl and even bite the person who tries to help them. And so what happens is people retreat. Instead of helping the dog, people leave the dog alone. The problem is that the licking can irritate the wound and make it seriously worse. Now the crazy thing is we can do exactly that. We can get rejected or hurt or become wounded on the inside and I want you to actually imagine a really ugly wound on the inside. I've asked Sasha Lee to put up a picture so there's a picture. I want you to imagine that wound on the inside of you as you've been hurt. Now, instead of going to the doctor and getting treated, maybe he gives you an antibiotic or some ointment, or maybe you even need an operation. Instead of doing that, we keep licking the wound. And if someone comes close to us, maybe their intention is even to help us. We growl at them, we snarl at them, and we may even bite them. You know, most people will back off. Most people will retreat. And two things will happen. You will build a wall around your heart, because remember, you think now that you are your refuge, you are your hiding place. And you will start believing that every single person is going to do what the person or the people did in the past to you. The crazy thing is you will also believe the lies of what they said that you actually are when you aren't. So you will not only protect yourself from the rejection, but you will begin to be deceived and believe that you are what they rejected you with. You will believe that you are that person. You will become incredibly suspicious of people's motives and you will growl and you will bite. And so you will form no real or deep relationships. The relationships that form are shallow or they're fake. Have you ever seen the saying, Often on any platform of social media, you'll see the saying, you can't break a broken heart. You can't break a broken heart. I disagree with that statement. You can break a broken heart. And this is the thing, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11 to 21. And just picking out some things from that, it's quite beautiful. It tells us that we are in the ministry of reconciliation. We are in the ministry of bringing back together, of reconciling people. Firstly, we are in the ministry of reconciling them back to God. And it says this, we are in the ministry of reconciliation because Christ's love controls us. The controlling force in our life is Christ's love. It's not brokenness. It's not wounds. The controlling force in our life through the Holy Spirit is Christ's love. It also says this, since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we have all died to our old life. Because Christ died for all, we have all died to our old life. This is the power of the cross. 
We are in the ministry of reconciliation. We reconcile people back to God. The reconciliation comes through salvation when they realize what Jesus did for them at the cross because God loves them and they cannot escape the love of God. You are not too bad for God to love you. He loves you. He already committed the act of love at the cross through Jesus Christ. So the ministry of reconciliation is getting people back to Jesus back to their father, that through the cross, they come back into a relationship with God and are reconciled to God, where they understand who they are, their image in God, children of God, adopted by God, loved by God, and that they are forgiven. Then, when they understand that, they are healed. They have come back into a place of relationship with God. However, The wounds remain if we don't go to the doctor and let him treat it. Now, let me say that again. The wounds remain if we don't go to the doctor and let him treat it. Because we can continue licking our wounds. We can continue nursing that terrible wound that's inside of us that's hurting. When God is able to supernaturally heal that wound. So now we're in this ministry of reconciliation because of Christ's love that controls us through the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us that His Spirit brings unity. The Holy Spirit brings unity. How can there be unity if we're wounded? How can there be unity if we feel like we need to protect ourselves? How can there be love? You can't love you can't trust, you don't believe people, you can't surrender your heart, and therefore you're licking wounds when actually you need healing. Now Paul said, since we believe Christ died for all, so as God has forgiven me, as his grace is for me, as his mercy is for me, as he loves me, he did that for all. He does that for others. He does that even for the people who have wounded us. Then it says, we also believe he died for our old life, our life before God, that we could come and make that exchange at the cross, my old life for a new life in Christ. But also that we can lay down our old habits, our old ways at the cross. So they're no longer part of our new life. The hurt, the wounds, the pain, it's no longer part of our new life. When Jesus was struck in his side, the Bible tells us he was struck in his right side with the spear. That blood needed to be shed to heal our wounds. The blood needed to be shed so that that yucky, pussy wound on the inside of us could be healed so that we can be reconciled We've already been reconciled back to God through our faith in Jesus Christ, but we need the wounds to be healed so that we can be reconciled back into relationship with people that have wounded us, that we can be healed and not wounded. You know, the great apostle Paul, the Bible tells us that he and Barnabas had ministered. They were men of great faith. Signs and wonders had followed them. Then Paul says to Barnabas, hey Barnabas, let's go back to all the cities that we have ministered to, all the cities that we have preached to, and let's go and see how the new believers are doing there. What Paul wanted to do was go back and consolidate the new believers, that they would continue to grow in their faith, that they would become stronger in Christ. So Barnabas says to him, hey, that's a great idea. Let's go. But Barnabas wanted to take John Mark with. And Paul strongly disagreed with him. The Bible tells us why. The Bible says that John Mark had previously deserted them when they had been doing their work before and had not continued on with them in their work. The Bible tells us that Paul and Barnabas' disagreement 
were so sharp that they separated. That's quite a big deal. Barnabas and John Mark went on to Cyprus to minister and Paul took Silas instead of Barnabas now and went back to all the cities to minister to the new believers and to consolidate them. However, in 1 Corinthians 9 verse 6, it says later that Paul is speaking, he has written a letter to the Corinthians and he says, or is it only Barnabas and I who have to work to support ourselves. In this letter, he brings up Barnabas, and it's possible that they were later reconciled. You know, God can bring hope in a difficult situation. Their disagreement did not stop them from doing the ministry. Their disagreement did not stop them from doing the work of God. Their disagreement did not turn them against believing in God, saying, well, if this is what the ministry does, I don't want it. If this is how people treat you, I don't want it. If this is what it feels like to be hurt, I don't want it. This is like what it's like to be stabbed in my back, I don't want it. They continued to fulfill their purpose. They continued to do the ministry of the Lord. And as they continued to allow God to work through them, God was able to bring reconciliation for them. I would like to share this testimony with you about a man whose name is Stephen. He was born in Zimbabwe. His mom was given to marriage at the age of 13 and she had him. He was born when she was 14. He was just a handful of years between the ages of three and six when his mom took them into the town and she left him there. He was dumped in the streets. He said he began to live under a bridge. He started to do drugs and became a drug addict. And at the age of 13, he stabbed the first person ever. He said he joined a gang. He joined the freedom fighters as well. And he hated God with all of his heart. He also hated white people. His aim was to kill as many white people as possible. He said then he saw that there was an evangelistic event in South Africa and there were going to be two to three thousand people gathered in a tent and he said to his gang we're going to go there and we're going to bomb that place. He told them to stand each of them at a corner of the tent and when he blew the whistle they were to blow the place up and kill every person. But just before doing that, he said, well, let's go inside and look at the faces of the people we are about to kill. He said he went inside and they sat in the back row and a woman was invited to speak. She was from Soweto and he said she was incredibly beautiful. But as she spoke, the glory of the Lord was upon her and he was transfixed. He said, then she asked an evangelist speaker, a black man, to come up to speak. And he began to speak about the wages of sin being death. And he said he was very, very convicted. And he cried out to the Lord to have mercy on him. He said he cried so hard that everyone in the tent turned to look at him. And he gave his life to Jesus Christ. He said from there, he went straight to the police station and he surrendered himself. He told them what he had done and that God had forgiven him. After eight hours, the policeman said to him, well, if your God has forgiven you, then who are we not to forgive you? And he said one of the police officers, a white man, gave him a Bible. He said while he could not read this Bible at the time, he treasured it. He said God, with his sense of humor, had him adopted by a white man. He said in those years, a black man was not allowed to live in white areas or in a white person's home. But this white man broke the law and had him live in his home. And he looked after him. He was a father to him and he taught him. And he said this father gave him the surname Lungu. If you know Zulu, Umlungu is a white person. And um, slang is Lungu, and his name is Stephen Lungu. He kept him for 15 years and taught him all about the Word of God. 
He said that he has been all over the world to preach the good news of Jesus Christ and he was the first black man ever to preach in the Pentagon and he ministered the gospel of Jesus Christ. He has done many, many events and he said one of the events he had, an elderly woman came forward wanting to follow Jesus Christ. She turned out to be his very own mother and he said this, If God can change me, he can change anyone. I want to say to you today, when you know who you are in Christ, others cannot easily hurt you. Not because your heart is hard, but because your heart is healed. People can't hurt you, not because you've surrounded your heart with walls and your heart has become hard, but people cannot hurt you because your heart has become healed. That is exactly what the blood of Jesus did. That is exactly the blood shed when Jesus, that spear went into his right side and that blood and that water flowed, his heart broken, the exchange that our wounds, our brokenness, our shame, our grief would be healed. That is what God wants. We cannot reconcile others if we ourselves are wounded. And God doesn't want us wounded. God doesn't want us to get to heaven wounded. He made every provision at the cross of Jesus Christ that we would be fully healed so that we can help others to be healed. Let him heal your broken heart. Let him heal the wounds in your heart so that as you share your testimony of how God has healed you, He will be able to, through that prophetic word, heal other people. As he does it for us, his plan, his aim is to do that same beautiful miracle for others. And so this morning, I want to encourage you. I don't know what you've been through. So many girls have been victimized. So many girls have been sexually abused, physically abused. You know, God knows what has happened to you. He's not the author of your pain. He never wrote that into your story. But the Bible tells us the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came to give us a life in all its fullness. And when we bring those wounds that hurt to the cross of Calvary, and we allow the blood of Jesus to wash over those wounds, Jesus turns that brokenness, that evil plan of the devil to destroy us, he turns it into a testimony, a sharp out of the greatness of God and what he's done. And when we share that, others become healed. Others become encouraged to go to the Lord and allow him to heal them too, so that they can have a testimony of the goodness of God. And I want to encourage you, just come to God with all your brokenness. Lay it down at the cross and say, Lord, I have been holding this in my heart for so long. I repent of holding, nurturing, licking those wounds. I lay it down at the cross today and I ask you to heal me. That blood of Jesus that was shed to heal my broken heart, that I can actually get back into a place of real relationships with people. And I want to encourage you as you do the work of Jesus, as you love people, people will hurt you. But don't make it about you. You know, when someone doesn't answer a call, don't go. They didn't answer it because I phoned. People don't answer their phone for many reasons. They don't answer the phone because they don't feel like talking right now. It's got nothing to do with you. It's got everything to do with where they are at right now. And as you continue to love them, you will break barriers. Don't personalize other people's places that they are in right now. Don't make it about you. Actually, just allow the love of God to permeate through you to them so that you can minister love to them. Don't allow other people's positions of where they're at right now. Don't allow other people's sin to be on you. Don't do that. That's foolish. 
Just allow the love of God to permeate through you. Remember, your heart is not hard. Your heart is healed. And that's what enables you to love people. And the Holy Spirit seals that love in us so that we can love people. And remember, we can be in unity as a result of it. And so I want to encourage you as we pray to really just allow your heart to be healed by the Lord today. Let's pray. Repeat after me. Say, Father God, I give my heart to you today and I ask you to heal my heart of all its brokenness, of all its pain, so that today I will be healed and I will be whole because of the blood of Jesus. And Father, I pray for every one of us, Lord, that as we've been rejected and wounded today, Father God, we can come before you and allow your blood to make us whole, to make us healed on the inside, that we would be able to operate in this world with healed hearts. I pray, Father God, that you would minister to us your love, your grace, your forgiveness, your mercy, and that as we go out and love others, we can minister again your love, your grace, your mercy, your forgiveness. Thank you, Father, for your word to us today. Thank you that you work great miracles of reconciliation and it will continue to be a testimony in our lives. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May God bless you. Amen.